the entrance antiphon. Francis, the man of God, left his home behind, abandoned his inheritance, and became poor and penniless, but the Lord raised him up. Mass intentions this morning for the repose of the souls of Sister John Mary of the Cross and Sister Mary Gabriel We also pray for Elino and Elma. De Domingo for the soul and for Anton Selmeya. And we also pray for the repose of the soul of Patsy Prince who died yesterday the deacon's wife from our parish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your, and your brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to, to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, by whose gift St. Francis was conformed to Christ in poverty and humility, grant that by walking in Francis's footsteps, we may follow your Son and through joyful charity come to be united with you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Have you commanded the morning since your days began, and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth, and the wicked be shaken out of it? It is changed like clay under the seal, and it is dyed like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld, and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare if you know all this. Where is the way to the dwelling of light and where is the place of darkness? that you may take it to its territory, and that you may discern the path to its home. You know, for you were born then, and the number of your days is great. Then Job answered the Lord, Behold, I am of small account. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand on my mouth. I have spoken once, and I will not answer twice but I will proceed no farther. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lead me, Lord, in the way of everlasting. Lead me, Lord, in the way of everlasting. O Lord, you search me and you know me. You yourself know my resting and my rising. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark when I walk or lie down. You know all my ways through and through. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. O where can I go from your spirit? O where can I flee from your face? If I climb the heavens, you are there. If I lie in the grave, you are there. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. If I take the wings of the dawn, or dwell at the sea's farthest end, even there your hand would lead me, your right hand would hold me fast. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. For it was you who formed my inmost being, knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you who wonderfully made me. How wonderful are your works. Lead me, Lord, in the way everlasting. Alleluia. Alleluia. Today, harden not your hearts, but listen to the voice of the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus said, O to you, Chorazin, O to you, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. He who hears you, hears me, and he who rejects you, rejects me, and he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we conclude the season of creation, which we started last month, September, beginning of September, as we think of the spirituality of St. Francis of Assisi. And we pray for the Franciscan family as they celebrate St. Francis' feast today. But as a church, we also join the Franciscans in celebrating the creation or eco spirituality which St. Francis treasured so much. Why? Because creation sustains us. Creation keeps us going. Creation connects us to God. Creation also connects us to one another. You can bear with me that in creation we find God's presence. If we want to be in quiet time, we want to spend quiet time alone, one of the places which we can go to is just to go out and see and start looking at the beauty of what God has created. We sit and God speaks to us through that creation. We sit and we we appreciate God. In the morning before we wake up, we hear the birds in 
we hear the sound of different creatures that God has created, waking us up, giving glory to God, saying, thank you, God, you have made us. And in this in creation, which we are also part of, we, we come to say God is great. When we look at the seas, we see how wonderful God is, and we say, indeed, there must be someone who made these things. And uh, we, there is a, an American writer by the name of Leonard Boff who writes about the creation that the cry of the earth is the cry of the poor. And when we look around, what Leonard Boff is trying to say is that when we destroy creation, when we destroy the earth, we are actually destroying the poor people and we are also destroying our own lives. Leonard Boff goes on to say, look, the poor depend on these resources, just like we also who are, who want to be rich depend on these resources. But we exploit the earth, we exploit the, the, the creation for our own gain, hence in inflicting much pain on, on those people who cannot in manage to have even a little bit of the, the resources that we have. When we look around, look at the minerals that we have, who benefits from that? Those who are rich, they want to accumulate everything. They do anything to exploit. They can, if, even if they hear that there, is, there are minerals here, they will come and displace us and say, move out of this place. And they will get the minerals to themselves. We who have been displaced will be given peanuts when they accumulate in a lot of wealth themselves. So this is what um, Leonardo Boff is looking at and is encouraging us to, to take care of what God has given us, the creation, because that thinking of saying, oh, everything evolves on a person, has to come to an end and start thinking that everything depends on the creation, on the earth, what is found in, 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 in this world. That's where our life also depends. So it evolves, everything evolves perhaps on, in, on the earth. So we have to be more of not um, human-centric, but focus on the earth centric, the geocentric. Now, in human rights, we also look at land, for example, which is the creation that we, we depend on, that land rights is actually human rights. So when we deprive people of the land, we are depriving them of a lot of things. Depriving them of the, what they have to eat because they have to cultivate. So if, there is, if the land is destroyed, spoiled or contaminated, then nothing will grow there when, you, when we plant. And when nothing grows there, what are we doing? We are promoting anger and we are making people uh, to suffer. So this is how uh, part of the human rights, having the essential needs like food, because every human being is, has the right to, to food. So St. So Francis is teaching us something which is at the center of our lives, taking care of uh, creation, reconnecting with creation, making sure that uh, we don't commit, uh, destroy what, what God has created. In as much as what God has created is there to feed us, to make us survive, but how we use it, because 
some of it, when once it, it goes into extinction, it cannot uh, be renewed. They are non-renewable. My dear friends, what I am talking about can you probably be in, joined to what uh, is in the first reading of today. All along we have been reading about Job complaining to God because of what has happened to him. Everything taken away from him, he, he starts, he goes through difficult challenges, experiences, suffering, sickness, and cases the day when he was born. He, he says, oh, how I wish all these things I'm saying were written down, but God today speaks. God answers Job, and he uses, God uses uh, what has been put in place, what he has put in place, the creation, to say, were you there when I made this? Did you direct or even the sun, or even, do you know where light comes from? All these things. And our best response would be what Job has said, to let God be God and say, Lord, I have spoken once, and I will not answer twice, but I will proceed no further. I will allow you to be God, because this is who you are. You know everything. In our pain, in our anguish, in our in dry moments, as we try to look for God in creation, may we allow him to be God. May we allow him to work in us. May, he, uh, uh, may we allow him to speak to us. So we give thanks to God for the gift of St. Francis and for the Franciscans, and, for the, and may we learn to develop eco uh, spirituality so that we can be taught by nature that God is great. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, 
fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we bring you these offerings, O Lord, we pray that we may be rightly disposed for the celebration of the mystery of the cross, which St. Francis so ardently embraced through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example by communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, 
Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, face your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Stephen our Bishop, Sylvester his auxiliary and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Sister John Mary of the Cross, Sister Mary Gabriel Wamusli, and Elino, and Elma de Lomingo, and Patsy Prince, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Of mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Francis and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coheirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. Communion antiphon. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, through these holy gifts which we have received, that imitating the charity and apostolic zeal of St. Francis, we may experience the effects of your love and spread them everywhere for the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharistic celebration has come to an end. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of our need. We are protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God restrain him with humble prayer. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, trust into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who wander into the world for their win of souls. Amen. Um,